Peace, family. Chauncey, a.k.a. U Karima, GMOG Media. As you can see, live and direct, you already know. GMOG Media Studios. I uh, just want to do a quick sidebar, okay? Um, I got some footage I want to put up. Some powerful footage that I shot last month at Dr. Umar Johnson's lecture in uh, West Palm Beach, Florida. I was waiting to put the footage up with this brother that I met at the lecture last month. Um, his name is Linsky Jinbar. I bought the book, this book from this brother, powerful book, uh, which is called 21st Century Awakening, The Rebirth. Um, this book is a book that he wrote while in prison. He has a powerful testimony I want you guys to, uh, I want the people to see. But I was waiting to get in contact with this brother. I don't have his information. I gave him my business card when I met him and um, the brother has not called me. So, um, number one, I wanted to put this video up anyway so that the people can see his information and see his testimony and understand where he came from. He has a powerful story to share. And when I shot this footage, as you will see in the footage, uh, it was his first time speaking in front of a large crowd. So, uh, but it was a great story nonetheless, if you had a heard, heard of him. Like I said, he wrote this book while in prison. He'll tell you the full story, um, as you can see in the footage after, well, after I'm done talking. So, but yeah, this is a powerful story and uh, he has a book that's available. I tried to Google search this book, you can't find it online. So once again, like I said, if you're watching this video, if you know this guy, Linsky Jinbart, uh, if anybody knows him, tell him to get in contact with me. Um, Chauncey, aka you can read my GMO G Media. Um, you can email me directly and I'll give you my information. And I want to help promote this book and also get his name out there because a lot of people don't know about this, this, this guy at all. So, uh, yeah, that's basically it. I wanted to uh, put this footage up so the family can see it. And um, I know that uh, my channel has been getting a lot of uh, traffic uh, because of the content that I have. Um, my subscriber count's been up um, quite a bit. So thank you for that. Keep subscribing. Also, you can donate on my website, gmogmedia.tv. Just hit the donate button and you can do a donate. This will keep me going. This will keep extra content. Keep right. tuning in to new content for GMOG Media. Appreciate that family. Um, looking forward to upcoming events as well. Um, Dr. Kaba is going to be doing a lecture uh, in June about education. And I'm excited about that. GMOG Media is going to be in the building. I'm doing the footage for that event, so I'm very excited about that. Uh, be on the lookout for more information regarding that in the next few weeks. I'm going to help promote that event as well. Anything about education, any, anything about the youth, I'm all for it. That's what I'm about. Same thing with um, Dr. Umar Johnson. All about his independent school. I'm there. Um, you know, so, so all for that. So anyway, family, without further ado, I'm going to show this footage so that you guys can see. And like I said, uh, this is a powerful testimony from this brother. Very unique story. And hopefully I can get a chance to uh, meet with him and do an interview with him and help promote his, his book, get his name out there, and uh, he can just do more speaking, um, you know, uh, around Florida and around the country as far as his story. is very inspirational, very powerful. So without further ado, uh, Linsky Jimbar. Peace. So I wish you would re please receive um, our big baby brother, uh, Lizinski Jabbar. All right, and we're going to let him introduce himself. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my first time actually um, standing before a crowd of people uh, speaking uh, with a mic in my hand. Um, I'd like to begin this by explaining that uh, throughout my entire life I have uh, been through a lot of difficulties. I often ask God why would I have to go through so much at such a young age. And 
experience so much as I get older and older. But I believe that I am chosen. I believe that I am called. Um, Trying to make this as brief as possible. In 2003, I was accused and charged with shooting a white innocent bystander in the back of the neck. Allegedly, this white innocent bystander was waiting at a red light in Lake Worth, Florida, on 10th Avenue North and Northeast Street, when he was struck by a bullet um, that basically paralyzed him while in his vehicle. Now, originally someone else was accused and charged, but eventually I was the one who was placed on the news as the suspect, as the individual that committed this heinous offense. I remember the day I seen myself on the news, and I had my mother along with me, and I realized the amount of pain she received at that moment in time, because she felt that my life was over. And at that time, I didn't believe that my life was over because things had just started. But it wasn't until I was arrested and placed in the Palm Beach County Jail where I began to understand more and more of the situation that I was in. I spent approximately three years in the Palm Beach County Jail fighting the judicial system legally. When I first entered the Palm Beach County Jail, I was an ordinary inmate. I uh, spent a lot of time watching television, uh, playing cards and um, just acting a fool, as people would say, until I ran into conscious brothers who were familiar with the system, who had done a lot of time reading and studying and uh, had prepared themselves mentally, psychologically, emotionally, and most importantly, spiritually for the war, as they would say, that they were in. And from that time, I began to read and study criminal law, and in the process, I began to file motion after motion to receive justice because I realized at that moment in time that I was being used by the system. I was, I was a black male at the age of 18 who was going to find himself in a prison for the remainder of his life. So I had to do whatever it took to ensure that I received justice within the courtroom. I recall being provided with a public defender because I didn't have enough funds to afford a private attorney. And I went from attorney to attorney until I finally received this attorney named Scott Berry. And I, I have to add that this um, former public defender is a private attorney at this time. He has his law, own law firm. But um, when he first entered my life, I knew that he was going to treat me as an ordinary inmate. I had filed a motion to disqualify him while I was in the Palm Beach County Jail, and I basically forced him to be a professional. And I know that, you know, there are many people that believe that just because a person is in a position of power, that that means that they're going to exercise the power accordingly, but that's not the case. Uh, people misuse power and abuse power. So I felt that if I could file this motion and put this before the judge, then I could receive the representation that I needed to ensure, as I said before, that I would receive a fair trial. After this motion was filed, this attorney uh, immediately got in contact with me and told me that I had basically put his license on the line. And sometimes that's what it takes. You have to put someone's license on the line to get what you need done. And from that moment in time, he began to work hard and harder and harder to ensure that I received a fair trial. And in 2005, I was taken to trial and I was found not guilty by an impartial jury of attempted second degree murder with a firearm with a list of other charges. Now I was found not guilty of four different counts. Now at that time I thought that things would get a little easier for me because I won this trial, but things would only intensify. After the jury had decided that I was not guilty and the verdict was passed, 
to the judge. And then the judge realized that something had happened and the verdict was read before the court. The judge began to scream. He said there will be absolutely no celebrating in this courtroom and I thought I made that perfectly clear. Now, when this was done, the jury was still in the courtroom. And then from there he said, are we ready for the next trials? Now, there's a lot of stuff that I can't include because it's so much, but I had two other cases and I was taken to two more trials. I won another trial because I had the power of the creator behind me. And finally I was found guilty in one trial where I was sentenced to 10 years for battery on Leo resisting the arrest with violence. Now mind you, this incident occurred while I was in high school. Now I wasn't the perfect kid, but at that time I was living the life of a child. I had a 3.5 GPA, but the GPA began to lower because I became distracted. Uh, I wasn't focused, and as a brother used to tell me, don't become defocused. <laughs> and um, I received this sentence, and I couldn't understand how a man who was once a child could receive 10 years for battle on the or resisting arrest for violence when individuals receive lenient sentences for these type of crimes. Here you have a child who was scared while in high school because there were several police officers who did not look like him wanting to investigate a crime that he didn't even commit because it was discovered that he could have possibly committed this crime because he was in school when the crime was committed. But despite all that had happened in reference to that case, there was something greater going on. And it doesn't take a genius to discover some of the things that are going on, but you have to use your mind to go a lot deeper into racism in this country. And that's what I was able to do throughout my incarceration. I spent a lot of time reading and studying to get a better understanding of racism because I felt that I was used by the system. I spent three years in the county jail, as I said before, and I spent seven years in prison. And I'm gonna make this as short as possible. I remember the first time I went to prison and I was issued a job. I went before this committee and I was told that you were going to be on the farm squad. And I asked the woman who was a lieutenant at the time, what is a farm squad? She said that you'll find out Monday morning. When Monday morning came, I witnessed Europeans on horses with assault rifles. Now, I said, what is taking place before my very eyes? Eventually, I found myself picking cucumbers, squash, and cabbage on a plantation under the gun. And I, I found that majority of the people that were on the farm squad were brothers just like me. I spent seven years in prison. I've seen homosexuality. I've seen violence. I've seen destruction. I've seen brothers who are never returning to society. 
I've met conscious black men who have provided me with information that have helped me along the way. And I have only been out a little over a year. I went in when I was 17. Today I am 28 years old on the verge of being 29. This is real life, this is not a game. I'm trying to provide as much information to the people as possible. I haven't been to college, but I've educated myself. I'm a self-taught black man. And one of the men that I admire so much that I speak about in this book is Malcolm X. Malcolm El Haj, Malik El Shabazz, he has uh, influenced me so much and I have him in my heart and he has encouraged me to take a stance against the enemy which is referred to as a common enemy. I am so grateful to be here today and to be provided with this opportunity to speak to my black brothers and sisters. And hopefully this is just the beginning and I feel incredible. And once again, I thank you all for providing me with this opportunity. And most importantly, I thank the creator of the universe and everything in it for this chance to deliver this message. Thank you. I'm sorry. The name of my book is 21st Century Awakening, The Rebirth. My name is Linsky Jean Ball. And I realized that I come from uh, the French who once dominated uh, the island of Haiti. And uh, I like to say this to uh, a lot of brothers and sisters. Uh, I realized when I was uh, reading and studying about uh, Haitian history that they come from the west part of Africa. And then when you tap into African-American history, you realize they come from the same place. Probably come from the same tribe, probably spoke the same tribal language, but you know, it takes time. And I want to thank the young man for coming forward.